Hey gang, I'm in Glenwood Springs and I'm at a beautiful little cemetery here called Rosebud. And unfortunately we're here today to talk about the sad death, the murder of a young man, a real nice guy actually. It was out in LA and you'd say, why? Why are we here talking about LA and why would we be talking about someone as evil as Charles Manson? But that's why we're here. That is why we're here. Gary Hinman was his name. Very, very nice guy, a gentle soul. He grew up here, right here. He was born on Christmas Eve, grew up here. He's a very talented guy. He was musically oriented, very intelligent. And he ended up moving out west to L.A. And he was teaching music. I mean, he was very musically inclined. He even knew how to play the bagpipes, I guess. And he taught music. He worked at a music store. But, you know, the problem was he was into drugs, too. He was dealing drugs. So that kind of got him in trouble. And what also got him in trouble was his gentle heart. And he, he was such a giver. Here, use my house, sleep over here. You need the car? You can use my car. And who did he hook up with? Drugs, using things, parasites. Charles Manson family members. They grafted right onto him, man. And he was selling them drugs, unfortunately. And that, he fell into the crosshairs of Charles Manson. And it was right at the beginning. Guys, it was right at the beginning of the horrific crime, the most infamous crime. They're still talking about it, especially in L.A. The Tate... La Bianca murders in the house. Helter Skelter. Who hasn't heard about that? I'm not going to get into it, but wow. What a story. Well, just before that happened, they were hooking up with Gary, and there were some family members that were a little bit closer than other family members. We've had this house in Topanga Canyon, California, and it, it was a nice house. And one of Manson's first followers, Mary Bruner, that's kind of how he met the group. She was a close friend of his. He helped her. Of course, she had a baby. Guess whose baby she had? Charles Manson's baby because, you know, he was God. He could sleep with everybody. But it was Inman who gave her diapers, baby clothes, and formula. It was, it was Gary. Look at these beautiful marble tombstones. Wow! These are quite amazing. Now, there's another, you know, the most infamous, some of the infamous members we know, Susan Atkins. There was a guy named Bobby Boussolet and Mary, and Mary Bruner. The three of them came to visit, and this Boussolet guy, he had told Manson, he's like, he's like, hey, Gary's got like a twenty or $30,000 inheritance. We, we can go get that. Like, what do we do? And of course, Charles Manson set everything in motion. He's like, oh, yeah, you three go over there and you scare the crap out of him and you tell him he's got to join the family. And of course, when you join the family, what happens when you're in a commune? You've got to give up all your assets, your car, your house, your savings. Does that include the inheritance? Of course. Yeah, we're going to get our hands on that money. Well, 
it wasn't true. He didn't have any inheritance at all. But they went over there to Gary's house and they muscled him and it wasn't working. It was not working. Now, one of the problems, the complications that happened was Gary sold drugs through Boussolet, a bunch of drugs that went to this motorcycle gang that Boussolet sold called the Straight Satans. They were like crazy guys, crazy gang, criminal gang. They called themselves the one percenters because 99% of the bike riders and people were law abiding and they were the outlaws. So just imagine what you're dealing with here. Well, I guess the drugs were not that good because the biker game, gang came back and they beat the crap out of Boussolet. And they said, we want our money back. Of course, he didn't have the money. So he went back and he told Gary, he's like, dude, you got to give us the cash. And Gary was like, I spent the cash. He showed him the checkbook. Cash is gone. So phone call to Charles Manson. What do we do? What do we do? Just hold on. I'll be right over. So Charles Manson comes over and he brings like this samurai sword. And he just like takes a, it takes a chop at Gary's face, hits him, practically cuts his cheek apart, cuts his ear off almost. And uh, then he looks at, and Boussoulet's like, why did you do that? And Manson goes, it's to show you how to be a man. That's how to be a man. So, of course, Manson the coward takes off and he leaves, he leaves Boussoulet there with Gary. Now, it's still not turned into a crazy murder situation, or but Boussoulet is starting to panic. He doesn't know what to do. He's, he's, he's try they're trying to, all three of them, they're trying to, they're using dental floss to stitch up the wound. And Gary's like, I got, we got to go to the hospital. Take me to the hospital. No. Why? Well, Boussoulet's making up reasons, but he's like, he's thinking, oh man, I'm going to go to prison. Well, I, I can't bring him to the hospital. And that was kind of Gary's final downfall. He just said, you know, we're going to the hospital. You got to take me and I'm going to report this and you, you guys are all in trouble. And that pretty much did it. Boussoulet stabbed him twice in the chest and you know, for anybody that knows and doesn't just watch movies, when you get stabbed, you don't die right away. And if you're getting stabbed twice and you're not mortally wounded, you know, it could take hours even longer for a person to die. So they panicked even more and they just started smothering him with the pillow, all three of them. And it was Susan Atkins who finally squished him for long enough where he couldn't breathe anymore and finally did die. So they killed him. That's how they killed him. So Gary finally dies and then they get this bright idea, these knuckleheads, that they're gonna throw the investigators off by painting the words with Gary's blood on the walls, political pig. And the cops are just gonna like go, oh, that's the Black Panthers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, real, real rocket scientist he was. They ended up walking out with only $20, about 20 bucks. And what did they do with the money? They went to buy munchies. Well, it was about a week later, Mr. Smarty Boussoulet was found asleep on the side of the 101 freeway. He's still wearing the bloody shirt from the murder. So, of course, what happens? Gets arrested, gets charged with murder, gets the death penalty. 
and then it gets vacated like everybody else. You get to spend life in prison. That's your reward for murder. Pretty, pretty sick. It's interesting to note that after all this went down, they were trying to say that the Helter Skelter Tate LaBianca murders was all about trying to cover up and distract the police, throw them off the path to get our friend Boussoulet out of jail. Now, whether you believe that or not, I don't know. But that's what they said. Here's Gary's grave. 1934 to 1969, it's a nice stone here. I'm looking to the right here and I see his mother, Francis, let's walk over there. Now what's interesting is I see that Francis died just a year later, look at that, 1970. Well, that tells me that I mean, we'll have to research that one, but my guess standing here is that the death of her son, the horrible death, the way he died, just, you know, that just takes people out. Your health goes down and you just, the depression, all of that. Oh, boy, that's really sad. I hate seeing that. Wow. Well, he was a nice guy. He was too nice, but you can't blame him for that. There's a lot of nice people. He just ran into the wrong crowd and, you know, into the drugs. It's not helping matters, but you know what? A lot of people get by on that and they don't get murdered. So, pay our respects to Gary, Gary Hinman, Gary Allen Hinman. Rest in peace, Gary. Rest in peace.